So I've been talking to a few Australian fellas lately and you know I've been trying to get my head around the kind of needs that they have uh, which are very different to ours and so I just want to talk about a couple of things there so one is say like Kelpie versus Border Collie um, uh, talking to your dog and giving him commands as opposed to nice dog that will work on his own and just a couple of things like that so the whole Kelpie Border Collie thing I was in Norway there and uh, we had a real good Kelpie come to one of the clinics and I tell you I had never seen a Kelpie before never worked one I thought it was a, that particular one I thought it was a little bit stubborn I wasn't sure if it was stubborn or a little bit stupid but it had a big desire to work so I'd imagine it's probably stubborn because I can't see it being stupid for very long you know we had the thing it wanted so uh, that'd be a nice dog to train and I'd be quite confident that you know I could have that dog that I could send it you know a thousand yards for sheep you know if it was the only dog I had and I kept at it so that whole border collie kelpie thing like I know it sort of divides people in Australia but if you keep a bad one it doesn't really matter what breed it is and if you keep a good one well it doesn't really matter what breed it is but if if you got a shitty border collie you can't be writing off border collies because of that because I've, I've seen a, sh a shitty kelpie there recently too and I wouldn't be silly enough to think that kelpies are no good because you know the whole trick is don't be keeping bad ones like and then the other thing is bloodlines uh, you know I hear a lot of talk about bloodlines in Australia here as far as I'm concerned we don't really have a bloodline uh, you know, our fellas don't have bloodlines because we've got Facebook and we've got easy access to different sires and everything. So it's kind of a bit of a melting pot on the whole border collie thing. So again, I think it comes back to selection. And, you know, I think selection has a lot to do with, like, the breeder. What's the breeder's goals? That's what I'd be looking at. When I want to find a dog, I look at the fellas who I think have the kind of dogs that I want. And I don't really care what names are on the dogs or where they got them or how they're bred or anything else. Well, I do care how they're bred, but I mean, you know, I'm going to those fellas because those fellas are going to have what I want and they're selecting for that. So two breeders could have, you know, similar names on their dogs there for three generations, you know, similar back breeding, but like they could have completely different type of dogs. I'm thinking of one fella right now, um, you know, and he'd have a lot of names on his dogs there and his back breeding that I'd like, good dogs but he selects completely different. So he's got a very different product here after three generations. So that's what I'd be thinking. I wouldn't get too hung up on bloodlines. Maybe in Australia, you know, maybe maybe you can work more on bloodlines. In Ireland, England, Europe, bloodlines, well, and certain bloodlines there I know if I'm gonna get them, I'm probably gonna get something that's light and fast and free, you know, and that's not gonna suit me. So, you know, I know there's certain dogs to keep away from. And so my own dogs even, like I know what I'm breeding for and I know what I'm selecting for, but that's no guarantee with pups. So if you get a pup from me, you might say, hey Paddy, in a year's time, this pup is a bit light and a bit weak and a bit fast and a bit easy to contain and all. You know, I thought getting a pup from you was going to be something different. And, uh, or, you know, it's going to be different to what this one has turned out as. But that's the trouble with pups. Pups are, you know, they're a bit of a lottery really. And so my point of view on breeding, we all know that I want stamina, balance and power and I want plenty of them. But you know, I'm not always going to get that, and so I'm going to be selling the ones I don't like. I even gave away a pup there, uh, a stud pup I got back from Jim. I even gave it away there recently, um, and he was working and everything. He just, I could see he wasn't going to be my dish. But I know with the whole semen thing that, you know, in Australia they import a lot of border collie semen, and they're selecting on, I know that, uh, you know, from talking to fellas there, that people like these dogs that you can send off into the bush and you don't have to command or... Or even, you know, if you're gathering where you can see the dog, that you don't have to command them. And they like that kind of quiet work. But if you see fellas working dogs here with no commands, they're probably soft. And that's the facts, like. They're probably no good. And so they don't have to say very much to them because the dog is not going to get in trouble. He's not going to over push or overcook anything. And so I wouldn't be selecting on the fact that, oh, he's lovely and quiet talking to his dog. Because you'll see us there, we, we command a lot over here. And it's because in trials, well, we're trying to keep lines, so we're going to lose points when we go off line, so we have to use our commands there. But when I say I select dogs, I want balance. So I want that balance, so when they're at a distance or they're in a tricky place, or I can't see them, or there's a fog or whatever, that, you know, I can rely on my dog to, he can work it out, he can balance them up and keep them together. So I want that. But if I was working my dogs, you know, on big numbers of stock, like years ago there now, when we had a couple of thousand yaws, 
but you don't have to say very much to them. The work trains them and really, really you could just let them work. You'd rather not be saying anything to them because you get tired talking to them. I'd hate to have to be commanding a dog and telling them what to do on a, you know, on a big number of sheep or if we're working every day. But the trouble over here is that, compared to Australia, is that this is like micromanagement. So, you know, we're always working on small numbers. We're always working on fine details and fine tuning and stuff that in Australia you don't need to worry about too much. In, when I was working, I didn't have to consider that kind of thing too much. And I didn't have to fight with my dogs too much to train them either. You know, I didn't have to, you know, widen them and things like that was a lot easier. Because, for example, outruns, if I sent him out there for 500 sheep in a field and he cuts through them, well... I'm going to keep flanking him and working him and working the shit out of him. And then he'll, he'll soon figure out that it's in, it's in his interest to keep out and to keep out around the fence and gather them all up. Because then he'll only have to do it once. So any dog with half a brain is going to learn that quick enough. So, you know, work is really... It, if we had big work here, our dogs would look different. And it's not that they might be different. Well, certainly the weaker ones, they'd show up more. But if we had big work... Uh, it would do a lot of the training and so we wouldn't have to be doing the micromanaging thing and we wouldn't be training you know we wouldn't be delving down into the whole training idea as much i i thought i was a good trainer years ago but i look back now and i could see it's just that i had a volume of work and my dogs were working every day they trained up fast it wasn't that i was a genius like and then there's one other thing i want to talk about that's a little bit of a myth here and it gets up my nose now it really gets up my nose it's where some fella says Oh yeah, well my dogs aren't just trial dogs, they're work dogs too because they have to do all my work. But if you look at all his work, you know, maybe he has 200 sheep or 400 sheep, maybe he's handy little paddocks, maybe his fences are good, maybe his yard is good. And really the truth is, if I had a weak dog I could do it. Because what you'd find is if you were with that fella, is that he's helping these dogs a lot, you know. When, <coughs> you know, he's, he's closing gates behind sheep, he's tightening them up, the dog doesn't actually have to do that much. I could do a lot of work with a weak dog, or a green dog for that matter. But if I had a weak dog, I could do a hell of a lot of work with him. I could make him look good. i tell you he was good, because you won't find anybody here that'll tell you that their dog doesn't have power. They all have power. But the, there's a big difference between, you know, dogs that can really work. Let me just think, what is the difference? Well, with those guys, the dog is doing it on the dog's terms. Whereas, say, when I want a, you know, a dog to do something, He's doing it on my terms. When we go up to the mountain, he can't just say, Hey, buddy, this is not really working out. I'm getting a bit tired here. And that one is a bit too difficult there. And she's fighting with me. She keeps trying to headbutt me and all. And she's up on that rock. And, you know, I don't really want to get her today. Maybe you could get her, Paddy. My dogs don't say that to me. But if I had some of those dogs that the fellas would be... My wife just rang me there to tell me that we're 19 years. It's 19 years today since... I proposed to her. Yeah. So anyway, uh, but now I'll tell you a funny story about that. Uh, um, I met my wife and after about three weeks, I was nearly going to propose to her. And then I said, no, Paddy, don't be impulsive. Now wait. So I waited for another three weeks. So after six weeks after meeting her, I proposed to her and she said yes, lucky enough. And then six months after that, I was married to her. And now she wasn't pregnant or anything. We didn't have babies for a couple of years. But the reason that I was able to, you know, know so fast that this was the right one is because she had all the qualities of my best dogs. Now, she didn't have power balance and stamina. But what she had was, I knew that, you know, if things went wrong, she wasn't going to jack up and leave me there. Or I knew if, you know, if I made some mistakes with my money and lost all my money and we didn't have a pot to piss in, she wouldn't be gone. I'd still have her... And you see, that's the same thing as my dogs. When things go to shit with my dogs, I only keep ones that will stay with you. Because there's going to be plenty of times where I'm wrong. Years ago, when we were lambing big numbers out, like, you'd be, you'd be worn out, like. And I was hot as hell then, because I was young and all. And you'd be fighting with dogs and all. And there'd be no good having a fella that, even when you're wrong, and you're fighting with him, and he just clear off on you. Because I know that's what a lot of dogs, you know, that's what they're made of. There's not a lot in them. And so... <laughs> it was the same, I could identify that characteristic in my wife and I said, yep, here's someone I can depend on, here's somebody I can tie up with. Uh, and so, it was the same characteristics that I look for in my dogs. If my dogs got out, in, if sheep got out in the middle of the city with me, I wouldn't have to worry, I'd just pull up with my jeep and trailer and I wouldn't care if there buses going by or people or anything else. I know that I get the sheep. And so, I want that kind of thing in a dog that, 
you know that you can just trust them regardless now the other thing i didn't mention there is cattle dogs you know i don't really have videos of my dogs working cattle because i don't work cattle i used to work them a lot years ago uh, we probably had i probably had a couple of hundred head of cattle between cows and calves and lumps of weanlands and all kinds of stuff and so i wasn't that easy to work with so i had dogs that would just do everything because people wouldn't really help me and <clears throat> So, but uh, you know, it's sort of dangerous I'll work. I got a good dog killed the cattle one time. And nowadays I don't dream of putting them near cattle because I'm a hobby guy. It takes too long to make a good dog and I don't want to get them broke up. It's something that catalogs aren't that valuable here. Like maybe catalog might be worth 3,000. You know, a good trial dog be worth 10,000. You know, a good one. So economically now, it just doesn't make any sense to go near cattle. But that doesn't mean that they won't work cattle. And then I see it's the same story there. I see fellas <coughs> with videos up, you know, pretending to work cattle, is what I call it. You know, the cattle are used to coming into a yard or they're used to coming down here to get a little bit fed and they put the dog around them and it looks like they're working. But it's the same with with cattle or with sheep or with anything. You see these reversing videos, they're reversing yo's around, and so the yo's not going to fucking threaten the dog in a fit. So those kind of videos now, they're rubbish like. So that's back to what I'm saying there. You know, when we're selecting, we don't want to be selecting because because the fella's not saying much to the dog because it's probably weak. We don't want to be selecting because it's reversing up some yaw and lamb that never challenges it because it's a bluff. And then we don't want to be buying it because the fella says it works cattle and is following a few handy dry cattle that aren't fighting with it. I mean, that doesn't mean most dogs, lots of dogs do that. But I mean, it's back to, it's back to when when the shit hits the fan, what have you got like? So, uh, I'm not trying to promote my own dogs here. I'm just trying to say, uh, question what you're looking at. Like, you know, don't just don't just suck it in there. You could be buying real rubbish there. You could be breeding the real rubbish and you think you're breeding to something nice and it's all a little fantasy in your head like. So, you know, make sure you know what you're looking at.